iPhone chargers have seen some serious upgrades over the years. With each revision, connectors have become sleeker, faster, and more efficient. But despite the benefits, there's always been one consistent drawback, the hassle of adapting to yet another new connector. No matter how much better the new connectors are, the process of replacing cables and accessories always sparks frustration. But here's the thing, while these chargers can be super annoying, they're really crucial to making iPhones better. Every upgrade from the bulky 30 pin connector to the sleek USB-C connector brought improvements in charging speed, design, and functionality. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the evolution of these connectors, breaking down each major type, their history, and how they've changed the way we charge our devices. So let's dive into the evolution of iPhone charging connectors, starting with the clunky 30 pin connector. If you had the original iPhone or anything up until the iPhone 4S, this is the connector you're probably all too familiar with. And honestly, it was kind of a beast. First off, the 30 pin connector wasn't even created for the iPhone. It actually started on iPods. Back then, it made sense. You weren't just charging your device. This connector was a gateway for everything. It handled charging, data transfer, video output, and even audio. You could plug your device into a dock and play music directly through it, or even hook it up to a TV. It was pretty versatile at the time, but it did come at a cost. And so let's talk about its design. Compared to today's sleek and compact connectors, the 30 pin was massive. It was wide, bulky, and not exactly what you'd call durable. The pins themselves were fragile, and the cable had this tendency to fray at the ends. Plus, it wasn't reversible, so if you tried to plug it in the wrong way, you'd be greeted by resistance and maybe even a few scratches on the port. But here's the thing, it did do its job. For years, the 30 pin was the standard, powering not just iPhones, but an entire ecosystem of Apple accessories. Docks, speaker system, card adapters, this connector was everywhere. However, as iPhones got thinner and the technology advanced, the limitations of the 30 pin became obvious. Its size alone was holding Apple back, and it wasn't exactly future proof. By the time the iPhone 5 came around, Apple decided that it was time for a change. The 30 pin had served its purpose, but it was clear that something smaller, faster, and more durable was needed. And that's when the lightning connector came in. Compared to the 30 pin connector, lightning was sleek, compact, and most importantly, reversible. That last part, an absolute lifesaver. No more fumbling around to figure out which side the cable needed to go in, you could just plug it in and be done with it. But the lightning cable wasn't just about convenience, it was a massive improvement in terms of design and functionality. First off, it was way smaller, which allowed Apple to shrink the charging port on the iPhone. This freed up some space for other components, like the speaker grill at the bottom of the phone. It also just looked way cleaner and more modern compared to the old 30 pin. On the tech side, Lightning brought better charging efficiency. It used 8 pins that connected digitally, which was a huge upgrade from the analog components in the 30 pin connector. This made the Lightning connector not just smaller, but also less fragile overall. And let's not forget, it wasn't just for the iPhones. Lightning quickly became Apple's go-to connector for everything from iPads to iPods, creating a unified ecosystem. It even extended to accessories like the Magic Mouse, keyboards, and AirPods. But despite all its strengths, Lightning wasn't perfect. Over time, people started to notice its limitations, especially as the rest of the tech world moved forward with USB-C. Lightning was stuck at USB 2.0 speeds, which made it feel outdated for things like transferring large files. Plus, it was a proprietary Apple technology, meaning that you had to buy Apple certified cables and accessories, which wasn't cheap. By the late 2010s, it became really clear that Lightning's days were numbered. Consumers wanted faster data speeds and universal compatibility, and USB-C seemed to check all of those boxes. Still, Lightning had a pretty massive run and played a key role in shaping Apple's ecosystem for over a decade. But eventually, even Apple had to move on. And that's where things do get interesting. Because before USB-C, Apple introduced something completely different, MagSafe. Introduced with the iPhone 12 in 2020, MagSafe wasn't your typical charging connector. Instead of plugging in a cable, it used magnets to snap a circular charger to the back of the phone. Sounds pretty futuristic, right? And in a way it was. The design was completely different from anything Apple had done before. The charger itself kind of looked like a hockey puck, which attached securely to the phone thanks to a ring of magnets put into the phone's back. 
This magnetic alignment made it super easy to connect. No more fumbling around in the dark trying to plug in a cable. You just snap it on and you're good to go. But MagSafe wasn't just about convenience. It opened up a whole ecosystem of MagSafe accessories like magnetic wallets, cases, and car mounts. Apple was clearly thinking beyond just charging with MagSafe and probably were hoping that it would be the next big thing. However, let's talk about charging speeds, because this is where MagSafe has a bit of a downside. It supports wireless charging up to 15 watts, which is decent, but it's still lower than wired charging with USB-C or lightning. And while it's cool and all, there's one big thing missing, data transfer. Unlike lightning or USB-C, MagSafe is strictly for charging. There's no syncing your phone to a computer or transferring files. This made it feel like more of a complement to traditional charging methods rather than a full replacement. It's pretty obvious that Apple was testing the waters here, possibly laying the groundwork for a future portless iPhone. And while MagSafe has its fans, a lot of people still prefer the reliability and speeds of good old fashioned cables. Which brings us to Apple's latest and arguably most consumer friendly move, USB-C. After years of consumer demand and a little push from EU regulations, Apple did what people have been asking for forever. They introduced USB-C with the iPhone 15. And let's be real, this change was a long time coming. USB-C had been a standard for most modern devices for years, and its arrival on the iPhone was a massive win for consumers. Let's start with the design. USB-C was sleek, compact, and just like lightning, reversible. No matter how you plug it in, it works. But what really sets USB-C apart is its universal compatibility. Unlike lightning, which was exclusive to Apple devices, USB-C works with just about everything. Android phones, laptops, tablets, headphones, you name it. For the first time, you could use the same cable to charge your iPhone, iPad, and even your MacBook. No more juggling different cords. Now, let's talk about the real game changer, data transfer speeds. On the standard iPhone 15 models, USB-C delivers the same speeds as Lightning. But on the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, it's a different story. These models support USB 3.2 Gen 2 speeds, which can reach up to 10 gigabytes per second, a massive improvement. With the right USB-C cable, this makes transferring files like Pro Raw photos or 4K ProRes videos significantly faster. It's a feature aimed squarely at professionals, but honestly, anyone who's ever had to wait forever for files to transfer will appreciate the upgrade. But why did it take Apple so long to switch? Honestly, it probably has a lot to do with control. Lightning was proprietary, which meant Apple can make money off of certified cables and accessories. USB-C, on the other hand, is open and universal, giving consumers way more freedom. Of course, the EU stepping in with regulations forcing Apple to adopt USB-C didn't hurt either. So is USB-C the ultimate iPhone connector? For now, it sure feels like that. It combines the convenience of lightning with the versatility and speed of a modern standard. But knowing Apple, this probably isn't the end of the story. The real question is, what comes next? If you've been following Apple's design trends, it's pretty clear where things are heading. A portless iPhone. And honestly, this isn't just speculation. Apple's already made moves in that direction. Let's look at MagSafe again. When it was first introduced on the iPhone 12, it felt like Apple was testing the waters for a wireless future. With the magnetic alignment, the ecosystem of accessories, it all seemed like a part of a bigger plan to eventually ditch ports altogether. But there's one big issue. Wireless charging just isn't there yet. Even with MagSafe's 15 watt charging speeds, it's slower than most wired options. And let's not talk about how inefficient it can be when it comes to heat and energy loss. Then there's the question of data transfer. Right now, you can't transfer files with MagSafe, and while wireless options like AirDrop are great for smaller files, they're not practical for large video projects or backups. For Apple to go fully portless, they'll need to seriously step up their wireless game. But anyways, here's where things get interesting. Before the EU forced Apple to adopt USB-C, a lot of people thought the company would skip it entirely and go straight to portless. But with USB-C on the iPhone now, it seems like they're taking a more gradual approach. Maybe it's a way to give consumers time to adjust before making another major leap. So is the portless iPhone inevitable? Honestly, I feel like it. Apple is always chasing that sleek, minimalist design, and removing the charging port would be a huge step in that direction. Plus, it seems like it would make the iPhone even more durable by eliminating one of the most vulnerable parts of the device. But here's the catch. Going portless needs to feel like an upgrade, not a compromise. Until Apple can match or exceed the reliability of wired charging, it's hard to see consumers fully embracing a portless iPhone. For now though, USB-C feels like the perfect middle ground. 
a universal, fast, and consumer-friendly option. That said, if any company can pull it off and make us think it was their idea all along, it's Apple. 